What is good guys, back with more smoke on Snake Draft, this time Empu vs Sakri looking at the teams. I think the Landers has to be defensive with either Z Fly or with Toxic, otherwise Halucha just destroys this team. Then, well it could be Rocks on this or on this, I think the turn is going to be a bulky variant um, with leftovers. Um, either Magma Storm or Lava Plume, Earth Power, Protect maybe, and then last move could be Taunt or Toxic. Uh, Low Pony could be Fake Out plus Quick Attack, if it's that set then he might just not have a Scarfa. Um, or it could be Scarf Katana if the Lopani doesn't have Fake Out and Quick Attack. Tornadus. If Landris is not defensive Z Fly, if it's just toxic to deal with Halucha, then Tornadus could be the Z Move user. Um, it doesn't have to be Rocky Helmet Torn. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Because he also has um, potential Protect on Heatran to help with Band Katana. Landris can pivot into Katana at least once. So he's not super weak to Katana, but he could also be Bulky Torn because he's also not. He doesn't have like great counters for Katana, but he has some checks for it. And yeah, the Gastron is going to be a Spadef variant to help with Alakazam, Blacephalon and Greninja. On Sakri's side, I think it's going to be defensive, uh, I mean Max HP Bulky, Rocky Helmet, Tornadus to help with the Katana matchup. Um, then either Spikes, Ferrothorn and Rocks on Landris or a Double Hazard, Ferrothorn. Um, turn 1, Empo could go for Fake Out or he could also just hard switch out into Gastron, Heatran or Tornadus. Um, because I don't know if he wants to take Rocky Hammer damage, but he does decide to take Rocky Hammer damage. And Frustration or Return does not kill from this range. So Sakri is free to go for U-turn here and grab momen Momentum. And Ambo can switch out into either his own Torn, his Gastro or his Heatran. So Sakri has no reason not to click U-turn here. Ambo should not risk the low Lopani. This Lopani can actually put in a lot of work versus Sakri later in, later in the game. If Ambo gets up rocks and he can chip down the Landris a bit, the Torn a bit and the Morwell a bit, this low point can potentially win the game for Empo. Also, I don't think the Landris is going to be Scarf on this team just because Sakri is a bit weak to Zagat if the Landris is Scarf. So I think it's probably Rock's Lando, yeah. And then Scarfa is either the Gren or the Tita. And outside of Morwell, since this is a bulky Rocky Helmet Torn, he doesn't have many breakers outside of Morwell. So I think it's either Scarf Tar plus a Breaking Greninja or Scarf Greninja plus Bantar. Um, if Tita is the Scarfer, then the Gren is, I guess, Specs or Z-Move. If Gren is the Scarfer, then Tita is Bandit. And yeah, he's gonna have U-Turn on the uh, Torn and on the land to get his Morwal in. And yeah, he's free to click U-Turn here to get momentum as Empo goes in the Torn. Now we will see if it's a Rocky Helmet variant. He's not Helmet. So he's either Metronome or Z-Move is what I'm thinking. We could see the Tita or the Morwal come out here from Sakri. Um, if he goes Tita, he would then have to scout if uh, Empo has Z or out Pummeling because he has used that before in the past. Or if he has superpower, so he does pivot back into Torn, scouting for that, and there's the superpower. Now, um, since he has superpower, I don't think he's Z Fight. I think he's either Metronome or he is Z Fly. So um, if Empo doesn't want to stay in here and risk losing the Speeder, he can go into his Gastron or his Heatran. Um, but Sakri might also not want to stay in and risk dying to a potential Sky Strike. Um, so Sakri might also pivot back here into his Titar. But I don't know if Empo wants to um, stay in, because I don't know how much Hurricane does to him. If Empo can live a Hurricane, then he's fine to stay in, but otherwise I think I would switch out. But he does stay in, goes for Sky Strike as Sakri pivots into Tita. Crit only does 20%, I'm not sure if that means that it's Avitar or if it's Offensive Tar. Now we can lift the Superpower in Pursuit, um, this Tornadus, and now we will see from that damage. We see from the damage it's not Bandit, because it doesn't kill. Bandit would have definitely killed, so that means it's either Scarf or Avitar, I'm not 100% sure. Now Empo can just get up the rocks here as Sakri goes in the Torn, and Sakri is just going to defog them away. Now we will see um, what he has. He does have Toxic, which makes a lot of sense since he already revealed that he's Z-move on the um, Tornadus. So Sakri's just gonna hurricane here, get some chip. Uh, I don't know if Empo wants to stay in here to get rocks up again, because if this Landris gets chipped down, he doesn't have other great switches to Morwell. I, well, I guess he has a Heatran to check the Morwell, but it's not the best answer you can have. So he hurricanes again. Um, what did Empo go for? Went for U-turn to get momentum, but now this Landris is pretty much dead. It's only death for at this point. So he goes in a low pony and return does kill from this range. Sakri's gonna switch out here and obviously save it. Um, I was gonna say he could just sack the Tita, but he goes in the Ferrothorn instead to get some Iron Barbs damage. And I guess if he has Protect on the Ferrothorn, he could potentially go for that. Uh, I think Empo's just gonna frustrate, ag frustrate again. I mean, High Jump Kick is also an option. But just in case this Ferrothorn has Protect, I think Frustration again is the play. Because he's either gonna sack the Tita or he's gonna Protect to um, make the low pony crash with High Jump Kick. Or he's gonna try to pivot into something um, like Landris to, that resists Chai Jump Kick. So I agree with Frustrating again, and he just sacked the Tita. So Landris comes out. Ampo's gonna switch out here most likely. 
into either his Landris or into his Kartana. Those are the two options. Sakri could get up his own rocks here or he could go for Earthquake. Mm, yeah, there's no reason to stay in with the low burn here. So let's go into Kartana. Do we see Earthquake or rocks? We do see rocks go up. And yeah, Empo can just click Leaf Blade here. Since rocks up and Torn is toxic and quite low, Torn is not a great switch in anymore. Morwell is not mega yet, um, so he just stay in and Leaf Blade just killed. I think that means it's Bandit Kartana and Empo just doesn't have a Scarfer on his team. Goes into Ferrothorn knowing that this is locked into Leaf Blade. That Landris just died from 88, I'm pretty sure that it is Bandit. And that might not, that might not have been defensive Landris, I would have to run the Kalk. Um, but yeah, Empo's either gonna switch out in the Heatran here, or I guess he can... I don't know if he would stay in, I think he, he's probably gonna go Heatran. Um, even if Sakri predicts the Heatran and pulls a double, um, Empo still has a sack in Landris. But yeah, Morwell is looking quite scary since the Landris dies to rocks. Um, Sakri can go for spikes here if he wants to. As he stays in the Leaf Blade and that actually does 26% because it is Bandit plus 1. And he has T-Wave, uh, which makes a lot of sense because T-Wave slows down faster mons for the breakers like Mega Morwell. Um, so does he, he just gets up a spike. I was gonna say does he double T-Wave predicting the Heatran, that would have been a Heat play for Sakri. Now we're gonna see a Magma Storm or Lava Plume here from Empo. And I think he has to just go into Greninja, which is able to live any one hit from the Heatran here. Because we see it's a Leftovers Heatran. Um, we could also see a Toxic here from Empo, but we do see a Magma Storm, which connects and brings the Greninja quite low. Now, he could either sack the uh, Lando to rocks, or he could go hard into his Gastrodon. Those are the two options. I assume he's just going to sack the Lando to rocks and go Gastrodon afterwards. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Could also keep the sack for later. Just depends. If the Greninja is, a, like, we don't know anything about the Greninja yet. I just think it's either Specs or Z-Move, since the Tita um, was... Probably Scarf. I'm not 100% sure if it was Scarf or AV. I would have to calc the crit Sky Strike. I don't think it was AV, but it was just some sort of bulky top. Probably Scarf. No, it wasn't bulky if it was Scarf. I don't, that, that Sky Strike only did 20. I really want to calc that. One second, guys. But yeah, he does just sack it off to go into Low Punny afterwards. Yeah, not Gastron. He can also go into Low Punny and scatter out. You can just click Return here. Clicks High Jump Kick there, um, predicting Sakri to pivot into Ferrothorn. Now, um, high jump kick again, in my opinion, would have been the play because that covered him pivoting into um, Ferrothorn, but he just uh, frost rage, which is, also, which is also okay because I guess he didn't want to miss. And now, uh, Greninja could threaten this with Water Shrieking or Morwell could come out and click Sucker Punch. Um, I think he wants to click Sucker Punch here. I don't think he wants to take a high jump kick from this. But yeah, let me just run the card real quick. Um, so if the Tita has no bulk, as he does Sucker Punch and just kill the low punny off. And Heatran comes out and is just gonna click um, Magma Storm here. Sakri has no switch-ins. Um, I guess he might sack the Ferrothorn and come in with Greninja after to threaten out the Heatran. Exactly, that's just what he does. So he's just gonna go Gran here. And he has to click Dark Pulse. He cannot click a Water Move because there's a Gastro in the back. And I think Empo's just gonna go Gastro. Gastro should be able to live two Dark Pulses after Spikes and Rocks if it's Max Spadef. But yeah, I was gonna call how much Z Fly Tornadoes does one second, guys. He does a oh, sack of the Takata. Okay, sack of the Kartana. Um, which means this gets Ash form, and this is actually looks bad for Ample now. Okay, I will have to run the Kalk. I don't know if the Gastron could have switched into the Dark Pulse. Um, I mean, I think it could have maybe barely switched in, but then it would have to risk getting flinched. So he does recover there because in um, in Ash form that would have done. Yeah, I think this is pretty much over now. He can just knock off here. There's no reason to play rough because knock off also. Or, or if he had like other coverage to hit Gastron, but knockoff was most likely, like he wasn't going to T-Punch there. So now he has to try to outplay the Sucker Punches um, by... He doesn't have Wisp, he only has Taunt, yeah. And Heatran has no leftovers. And yeah, he just keeps trying to outplay the Sucker Punches, he has four Sucker Punches left. And I think he had enough, so he just attacked, damn, Sakri going in. So Sakri is um, probably won this already, and just forfeits. But yeah, I want to show you guys the card, I mean... Sky Strike would have done 26 to 31 to the Tita if the Tita was um, offensive. So I think that was definitely, um, yeah, it's, it was either Assault with Tita, which makes sense because Sakri is weak to Mega Alakazam. Yeah, I think it was AV Tita. It was either AV or it could have also been um, just some sort of really H heavily HP invested. But since it was a crit and it only did 20, yeah, I'm thinking that's probably AV Tita. And yeah, Gastrodon takes 32 to 38 from Dark Pulse, so he could have barely switched the Gastron into the Greninja, I think, earlier. But then he would, one, risk getting flinched, and two, Sakri could always go into Morwell on the turn Empo recovers. And Morwell could then um, 
destroy the um, the Gastrodon. Yeah, Moab player of this 88 to 100 for the Gastrodon. So like I said, he could have then just destroyed it or potentially break the, the switch into a trend by knocking. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you with more tournament coverage later. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. Have a fantastic day. Peace out, friends.